What's up guys? The first round of the 2023 NFL Draft just concluded and I just went through and graded some of these picks that happened. There were a lot of controversial ones. Such an unpredictable night, but it was great. But now, at this, right after the draft, I'm going to be doing a second round mock draft, what I think will happen during the second round tomorrow night. We're going to get straight into it. We saw a ton of unpredictable things. My mocks were out the window almost immediately tonight. But I'm alright with it. It was fun to watch. So we're going to go in, go ahead and get into the second round here with the Steelers having the first pick. And apparently the noise is that teams are looking to come up here to get Levis or Hendon Hooker. Um, but I do think that this will just start with the Steelers sitting here. And I do believe it will be Joey Porter to the Steelers here. You, you can see over here in this first round, these are all the actual first round picks. So now we're just on to the second round. Joey Porter will be the first pick there. The Cardinals are here at pick 33, and they got this pick due to the trade with the Texans, where the Texans went up to three for Will Anderson, and the Cardinals traded back to 12 with the Texans. And then the Cardinals also had pick 34, which is next, which they traded up to six with to the Lions to then take Paris Johnson, the first tackle off the board. So now the Cardinals only have pick 33, but they still gained that just tonight. And earlier on, the Cardinals did take Paris Johnson, first tackle off the board. Great tackle. They're trying to protect Kyler. You don't want any more of those injuries. Very valid. I like that a lot. And what we're going to do here with this pick is the Cardinals, they have a ton, man. They could, they could really work on a lot of things. They already addressed O-line in this scenario. And I think here I'm going to look to give them some D-line help because it is really rough. We could also look edge rusher. Don't mind that at all. And I'm going to pick Keon White here. I do believe he could go pretty early and they really need an edge rusher. If you go look at that group up front for Arizona, it's not looking so hot. Ironically, Arizona is hot, but it is not looking very hot for the Cardinals up front. Give him Keon White. I think it could happen. Again, this is all predictive how I think it's going to go tomorrow. So Joey Porter, 100% believe he could be a stealer will be a stealer, but not going to lock it in because I'm not for sure. Pick 34 now, the Lions, who traded the Cardinals to go for the Cardinals to go from pick 12, which they traded back to, up to 6. So now the Lions are here, and I really, really don't like this Lions draft so far, to be honest. Jameer Gibbs at 12 is a reach, especially with DeAndre Swift on your roster, um, and David Montgomery. I just don't understand it. Jack Campbell is a good pick here at 18. He's a middle linebacker, but they really needed to address more pass rush and more interior defensive line run stopping, and they didn't really do that. So I don't love this draft so far for them. But we're going to look here possibly at tight end, and I'm going to go Michael Mayer to give them their TJ Hawkinson replacement. I really like that a lot, and I do believe that that is a great possibility. The Colts are now here at 35 after taking Anthony Richardson at pick four. And this pick could be very easily a offensive lineman, even a corner after the departure of Stephon Gilmore. And I'm going to have this being DJ Turner, actually, out of Michigan and going to give them some corner help back. Um, I think this is a very, very good possibility after losing Stephon Gilmore. They are going to be a little struggling on that defense there. They gave up some pretty big pieces in the offseason, like Bobby Okereke as well. Now the Rams are on the clock at pick 36, and this is their first pick of the draft, actually. And here, this could be Will Levis, could be a spot for Will Levis, but they have a ton of needs. And what would best address a team with a ton of needs is the question here. I don't really think it would be a skill position, so my first thought is to go towards either an offensive line or a defensive line, even maybe an edge rusher. And I'm going to give them... Tuli Tui Pelutu from USC, keep him out in California, who's a great edge rusher, and I do think the Rams would like him out there. Um, I do think this is a very good possibility of happening. A lot of teams that are starting from scratch just try to develop a pass rush. It's a good first first part. Either, you know, you just get in the trenches there. You know, it helps. So pick 37 now. The Seahawks have a pretty solid draft going. They made a surprise pick with taking Devin Witherspoon at pick five. I was not expecting that, but... Then they picked Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. Great pick added to that wide receiver core. 
Really like that one a lot. Now we're going to look possibly either D-line or interior offensive line, wherever there's more value. And I do think that's going to be interior offensive line, guard or center. And Osiris Torrance in this scenario is still here. Osiris Torrance will be a Seahawk. And I think they love that at pick 37. That's a great value pick there for a guard position that they really need. So pick 38, now the Raiders are back up. Earlier, the Raiders took an edge rusher. Very surprised. Tyree Wilson did go off the board here. They pair him with Max Crosby and aging Chandler Jones. And now we're going to look probably either DB or we are going to look... This could be a Will Levis spot. I don't know how far Levis could fall, but this could very definitely be a Will Levis spot. And... I think I think Will Levis is going to need to start day one is the problem. So I can't see him going to a team that really needs... I got to sit for a while is the only problem. I could see Levis going at 47, definitely. Yeah, I think I'm going to opt to, to take a rain check on Levis here at pick 38. There could be trade-ups here, and that's actually what I'm going to do. I think I just talked myself into it. And I'm going to have the Raiders trading with the Commanders here. And the compensation doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be doing the third round of this. But I'm going to have the Raiders trading with the Commanders, and the Commanders are going to throw in pick 118 and a fourth next year to get up to pick 38 and take Will Levis here. I think this is about the range he'll go tomorrow honestly. So they get another quarterback to compete with Sam Howell and I believe Jacoby Brissett this year. So I like Will Levis at pick 38 a lot. I think that could happen. Could be a trade spot. Pick 39. Now the Panthers are on the board. And earlier Panthers went Bryce Young with the first overall pick. We all saw it. We all saw it coming. Well, most saw it coming. Um, And we are going to look now towards some other needs. I know they have Brian Burns off the edge but they could really use another edge rusher here. Uh, They could also really use wide receiver, and there's still some good ones here. And what we are going to do is we are going to give them Cedric Tillman. I do think it could happen. They do need wide receiver. They gave DJ Moore to the Bears, and what better way to address it with giving them an early second round wide receiver, and I like Tillman better than I like Hyatt, honestly. Tennessee fans may come after me, but... Tillman, without the injury, was a really good receiver and could be very good for Bryce Young in his first year. It would be funny, the Alabama-Tennessee dynamic there. The Saints are up here at pick 40. And Hendon Hooker is here, but Hendon Hooker is also old and coming off an ACL. And they do have Derek Carr, so I'm not really feeling too great about picking Hendon Hooker there. But what I would feel great, since the Saints did go Brian Brzee, addressed the deterior the interior of the defensive line. They also need the interior of the offensive line. Steve Avila is still here. Going to take him. Pick 41 now. The Titans are on the clock. And earlier, the Titans made one of my lock picks, which was Peter Skronsky. And I'm going to have them looking towards the wide receiver spot now. They could really invest in a lot of other things as well, but I'm going to actually give them Jalen Hyatt here. Ooh, or am I going to look at Hendon Hooker? Hmm... Could we see Tannehill moved tomorrow night and Hendon Hooker start at quarterback for the Tennessee Titans next year? Could we see that? I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, I think Hendon Hooker will fall, but maybe not. Maybe the Titans take him. He stays in Tennessee. They're out on Malik Willis, apparently, and Ryan Tannehill could be flipped or just asked to sit. And Hendon Hooker could come in there, win that starting job, and be their starting quarterback. Could happen. Let's, Let's pick it there. Pick 42, the Packers are up earlier. They went Lucas Van Ness. Now they're going to look towards, man, Brian Branch is still here. That's going to be their pick for sure. And they have a tool now at safety to move around. They lost Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage isn't the best last year, especially. So Brian Branch in the second would be a gym for the Packers here. It could be a top 10 player in the class. The Jets are now here at 43. Earlier they went Will McDonald which I hated that pick. I really, really, really hated that pick. Here they could possibly look tackle. There's still some really good ones on the board. They could also look linebacker here. Middle linebacker is definitely a need. 
Uh, there's great players, man. That's the thing about the draft tomorrow. There are still so many great players on the board. It's insane. I'm going to have them going with Dewan Jones here. Huge tackle. I know Makai Becton is another huge tackle that failed. I'm going to have them going with another one. Could be a very heavily criticized pick. I'm not sure if that's what they'll do. But I'm going to go with that and keep swinging on tackle. I like him way better than Bergeron personally. So we will see how that works there. Pick 44 now. The Falcons are on the clock. And the Falcons earlier went with Bijan Robinson in the top 10. So now we're going to look to address their pass rush. We're going to look at edge defenders here. And we are going to take BJ Ojolari off the edge, who is a great leader as well. So I really like him. And he can really be a edge rusher that your defense kind of rallies around. So... Really like that pick. The Packers are back up now, and the Packers went Van Ness earlier. I think that the Packers picked Brian Branch three picks ago, too, so they now also have pick 45 from the Jets. And pick 45 will be used here. We can look safety. We could... Uh, I don't really like many safeties now. Well, we already went Brian Branch, obviously, so they'll know what I was thinking. It's late. This is after the draft. It's 1 a.m., and I'm just trying to get this this mock draft out um here we go we're looking towards the interior of the defensive line possibly and i like keanu benton honestly there wisconsin you know keep him around keep him on green bay i like that i like that pick a good bit patriots are back up at pick 46 and earlier the patriots in real life went with christian gonzalez absolute gem of a pick they traded back and still got corner my corner one what a pick but the Patriots are back up, and the Patriots have some needs. They have some wide receiver needs. They have some tackle needs. I'm going to give them Matthew Bergeron. It feels like a Patriot to me. It really does. I'm going to give them to him, and I'm going to give them to them, not him. I that's, don't know what I was saying there. But pick 47, the Raiders are now on the clock. And the Raiders here earlier, Tyree Wilson. I think maybe we had another pick with him. No, we didn't. Okay, so now I'm going to look towards possibly O-line with the Raiders. It could be tackle. could be interior of the O-line. Um, I'm going to give the... They could also look defensive interior, but I don't really like anyone for the Raiders that early. I'm going to go ahead and give the Raiders Chandler Zavala I know this looks like a reach on this website but I think he could very easily go in the second tomorrow I like him a lot at guard and the Raiders do really need a guard so fits perfectly pick 48 the Lions are back up the Lions we had taking Mayer and then their two picks wide receiver and or not wide receiver running back and linebacker from last night or well I guess still tonight because I'm recording it after so now we're going to look towards the interior of the defensive line and I don't really know if I like anyone, honestly, here enough. Maybe edge rushers. And I like Adebowari. I like Erbig, too. This could possibly be Erbig. But I am going to go... Mm, this is a tough one. This is a very tough one. Because we haven't addressed edge yet. It's the problem. And they really just need to add another... I know that James Houston played well last year, but he's not going to be a for-sure starter um, he had a great year, but like that's not someone that you're going to ignore the still need uh, just because you have that guy. Could also look defensive interior, but I just don't like any of these D-tackles that much. We could also look towards safety a bit, but again, I don't like many of those either. Did we address corner with the Lions? No, we addressed Michael Mayer, actually. Corner is a big need. And I'm gonna I'm gonna address that here. I'm gonna give him Julius Brents a big physical corner, maybe like the Tariq Woolen, definitely not as much of an athletic freak. But of this class, if you could pick anyone comparable, it would be Julius Brents. He's six foot four and he's able to work very well in man and zone. Um, he has a lot of a lot of good traits about him, but he is the athletic kind of freak guy that is gonna be a little bit later in rounds, probably I'm guessing round two. But Pick 49, now the Steelers are up after taking Joey Porter, and we took Broderick Jones. I love this draft, man. I love it for the Steelers. It's my favorite team. Pick 49 now. Steelers on the clock here, and we're looking 
probably either interior defensive line. We could be looking edge rusher, possibly. I'm not a huge fan. Definitely linebacker is a huge possibility for the Steelers here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stay looking linebacker. Drew Sanders out of Arkansas, but I'm gonna. Mm, ooh, this one's a little bit tough. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna end up going Trent Simpson if I had to guess. Uh, he's very quick downhill. He's a huge speed kind of guy at middle linebacker, which I think we may covet because we've had some guys that haven't been as speedy. We really refreshed that room, bringing in Alandon Roberts and Cole Holcomb this offseason, getting rid of Devin Bush and Robert Spillane. So, yeah, we also Miles Jack. But Trenton Simpson here, I like that a lot. Brings us to pick 50, the Buccaneers. And the Buccaneers got Cansey earlier. I was surprised by that pick as well. But here we're going to look. Ooh, 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 where are we going to look here? This one could be a lot. This one could be a... Uh, it could not be a quarterback unless they wanted Hayner. Um, this one this one may be a tight end. I'm going to give the Buccaneers here where we have a tackle. Because they really do need another tackle. And I'm going to give the Buccaneers Cody Mock. Because he could also be a guard. He's just a ferocious guy on that O-line. He's just really the grit O-lineman. He went to North Dakota State. Um, he has all the personality traits of the gritty O-lineman. And I like him here to the Buccaneers. Hopefully you can have someone that's versatile inside and outside. I think it could very well happen. Now the Dolphins here. They need tight end. They need O-line pretty badly. That would be tackle. Um, but... I think they will probably go tight end here. And would Darnell Washington be crazy here? Could that be a possibility? Very well could. So could Laporta and Musgrave. I feel like McDaniel would love to use Darnell Washington as a big tool. And I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them Darnell Washington. See what they can do. They have a ton of speed guys. Give them a guy that can be an extra lineman, basically. And be a big red zone threat kind of the opposite of what they play which is a good thing to have sometimes because you give a speedy offense some big guy that can block and can catch man watch out pick 52 now the seahawks are here and the seahawks have man they've they've had some picks we had a guard we had a wide receiver and we had a corner so we're gonna look defensive interior here that's what we're gonna do we're gonna look defensive interior did we do an edge yet we didn't it could possibly be edge as well and I am going to give them Aditamiwa Adebaware here off the edge. They do need more edge help. They have Ochenna Nwosu, so give them another cool name. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Uh, pick 53, the Bears are back up. And the Bears picked Darnell Wright at 10, which glad they did as a Steelers fan. Um, but, yeah, it really addressed their tackle need. They have a, another big need on the defensive interior and a little bit on corner i'm gonna go ahead and give them gonna go ahead and give them siaki ika here there's a huge nose tackle out of baylor just a space eater complete space eater and they really need run defense so having a spe space eater allows you to work off of that and really free up your edge rushers and your middle linebackers so siaki ika to the bears there pick 54 now the chargers are back up after taking quentin johnston earlier pretty controversial pick there we're gonna have the chargers i don't really think they need corner yet i know jc jackson looked pretty bad when he was healthy and then got injured so we didn't get to see much but i'm gonna have them refreshing middle linebacker and taking we're gonna take drew sanders here to the chargers makes makes pretty good sense to me pick 55 the lions are on the clock and the lions again they've taken julius brents They've taken Michael Mayer. They've really, they've really added to this team, and I didn't like the Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell, but they can make up for it with all these picks in the top 50-ish range. What we're gonna look at here, since we haven't addressed the defensive interior yet for them, I'm surprised they didn't do it in the first round. But we're gonna look at Kobe Turner here out of Wake Forest to the Lions. Really give them another D tackle to work with. Um, because they do need it. That is a huge need for them is that run defense, and Kobe Turner is pretty good at that. Pick 56, the Jaguars are up. 
And the Jags in the first round actually took Anton Harrison after trading down twice, which was a good move, I guess. I really had Brian Branch going to them pretty often. I believe they needed a nickel corner pretty bad, but they took Anton Harrison, filled that tackle spot, and that was the last pick I've had with them, I believe. So they have a tackle so far. Let's look towards edge rusher, possibly. And I don't know if I like anyone this high, honestly. So corner, we already... Oh, we didn't. We didn't, actually. Could we give them the, my top slot corner in this class in Clark Phillips? That's that's what's going to happen. We're giving them a final slot corner. I know they're not valued high, but Clark Phillips plays with the grit and tenacity that one could have been in the league for many years. So I'm giving them Clark Phillips, finally just plugging a player in there, giving them someone that can play that spot. like that a lot. Pick 57, the Giants are back up. The Giants earlier took Deontay Banks. Great pick. I love that pick a lot. Banks is a good, really good athlete and will be good for them, I truly believe. Now, now they could look wide receiver. They could look center. I think I found where I'm going. And it's going to be John Michael Schmitz at pick 57. They would love that. They'd be ecstatic. It's a great draft if you're a Giants fan. Pick 58 now. The Cowboys are up. They went Mozzie Smith earlier. I predicted that one. I do believe... I do believe I predicted that one. I'm not sure. I think I may have gone Mayer. But here, they could also... They could look tight end. But... They could also look for another corner. There's some great corners here. I'm going to go Keely Ringo. I believe the... Cowboys really like their athletes at corner. And... Keely Ringo feels like a cowboy to me. I've been sticking with that one. And I know it wasn't in the first round. But it could definitely be in the second. The Bills went with Dalton Kincaid. They hopped the Cowboys for a tight end. They went with Dalton Kincaid there. Here I'm going to have the Bills looking to fill that linebacker hole. And I'm going to do that by taking Dion Henley here. He's a little bit undersized, but he's great in the run game. Absolute beast. Pick 60 now. The Bengals went with Miles Murphy, which to me is... I don't know how I'm feeling about that pick, but we know they need tight ends still, and Luke Musgrave and Sam Laporta and Tucker Craft are all still here. We're going to go Sam Laporta out of Iowa because Hayden Hurst is now a Panther. They do need a tight end pretty badly. Give them Sam Laporta. Iowa tight ends have a really good background and are very successful in the NFL quite often, so why not really trust that, you know? I would. The Bears here at 61, they took Siaki Ika last pick. They have a ton of these early picks. Eh, that's not true. I just, just lied. <laughs> Darnell Wright and the Siaki Ika. So we really got in the trenches there. Here I'm going to look actually at corner for them because I think it's important that they get another. Kyler Gordon didn't play quite well last year. So I'm going to ooh, I'm going to give him Cam Smith. Cam Smith's a very good press man corner and has the tenacity and attitude of a corner. I love him a lot as a prospect. I think he should go way higher than this. But in this predictive mock, when I'm going by what I think will happen. I believe he'll fall down here towards the end of the second. Pick 62, the Eagles are back up, and man, have they had a draft. Nolan Smith at the end of the first, and Jalen Carter, the absolute Georgia squad. So let's look now where the Eagles would want to go with this. And I think it's probably going to be guard, but there isn't really a guard that's high enough that I would pull the trigger on. It's definitely going to be offensive side of the ball. Uh, this could be a receiver for sure. Josh Downs would be a nice third receiver to have. Hmm, maybe a safety here. This could definitely be a safety as well. And I'm going to go with Jordan Battle here out of Alabama. Stick with the uh, SEC school kind of players. And Battle was good. I know he's overshadowed by Brian Branch a bit because he is the better, better safety slash nickel corner. But Jordan Battle is also a good safety and has his strengths as well. So... I will give them Jordan Battle there, and they do need to address that safety spot. I know they brought in Reed Blankenship, I believe, and um, Terrell Edmonds from the Steelers, but give them a young guy. They love to keep the position groups young. So Terrell Edmonds, by the way, is young because he was off his first contract. But nonetheless, pick 63, the Chiefs are up. And the Chiefs took Felix NUDK Uzama from Kansas State. I think I called that one a good bit in my mock drafts. They took him, uh, kept him in Kansas. So... Well, not Kansas, but, you know, local Kansas City is in Missouri, fun fact. But 
KC's back on the board. Wide receiver, possibly. Even corner, maybe. I'm going to give the Chiefs Jalen Hyatt here to wrap this up. And I don't know how this is exactly going to go. Usually it gets all glitchy and stuff at the end. But Jalen Hyatt to the Chiefs feels like a lock here. Not a, That is not true. Maybe not a lock, but feels like a very good possibility there. And we'll see if this actually ends up grading it or if I'll go to the full results and it'll show me. Okay, here we go. We'll look at this real quick, take a glance, and um, let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. The first round was super exciting, super fun to watch, and I'm pumped to watch it tomorrow night as well. Keep up with it. I'll, I won't be able to watch it actually in person, but I'll be on Twitter keeping up with it. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will be back with more content soon.